Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers. How are you doing today? Well, we finally made it. We are ready to record. However, there's a little setup that needs to be taking place. And so tracks and recording, that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be setting up tracks within Reaper and then finally recording in Reaper. And so with that, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we are in Reaper. We want to record, but we can't yet because it's not set up to record just yet. We have to insert a track. And so to insert a track, there's one of a few ways we can do this. We can either go track and insert track, or we can do command T, or the easy way is simply to double click within the TCP. And there we are. You'll note that there's a little bit of a difference between this track and the track that was in the major parts video and that it's not labeled. It is extremely important that you label your tracks. If you learn nothing else within this fundamental sequence of videos, you must understand that you have to label these tracks. The reason why is just as an insurance policy. There are numerous ways that you can recover from a fault if your tracks are labeled. And so we'll do that. We'll double click in the dark space here and then we'll label it. And if you're a podcaster, for example, you can say podcast host or you can say podcast guest. Or if you are, a, let's say, oh, I don't know, audiobook narrator, you can say chapter 11 and then give it the chapter name. Whatever it happens to be will be very um, original and say, rename me here. Okay. <laughs> You're going to see this come back into play. The label for the track is actually going to be applied to the media items in such a way that you'll see in just a second. Now, let's revisit a friend of ours that we met when we were talking about the major parts of Reaper that was rather unique, and that is the monitor echo. When I click on this record arm, we're going to be experiencing monitor echo like there's no tomorrow. So let's figure out how to tend to this right now. So in three, two, one. Okay, okay. Now, now we're in record mode. Now there are a few ways we can do this. We can click on this little speaker here once and you see that it hasn't gone away because it's in auto mode. Now, if we click again, Sanity ensues. Why in the world would Reaper want to do this? Well, again, remember, Reaper is meant as a music production software package. What this is meant to do is for an instrumentalist to be able to hear themselves playing their keyboard or their guitar without having an amp. And so there wouldn't be an echo. But with our voice and doing what's called direct monitoring, there's that echo. Now, how do we tend to this so that it is permanently off? Well, we can go into Options and Preferences. And then under Project, we go under Track and Send Defaults. Under Record Config, under Our Input, we're going to uncheck Monitor Input. I know that's a lot, but believe me, and we hit Apply and we hit OK. And now that monitor echo will not bother us again. While we're here, let's talk about gain staging for a second. What exactly is gain staging? It is probably going to be one of the most important things that you do as a voice talent in setting up your projects. Each project or each client has their own requirements, whether it's peaks at negative three, but the RMS values between negative 18 and negative 23, or they only specify peaks only at negative six, or whatever it happens to be. Now, there are two schools of thought as far as recording in projects that I've seen. The first one says, as long as you don't go above negative three, then you're good. Another one, which is sort of gaining strength more than that negative three peak, is saying that your peaks should be set between negative 12 and negative six. And that if you go over negative six just a little bit every once in a while, that's okay. But the majority of your peaks should be at between negative 12 and negative six. Now, what does that mean? 
Well, let me stretch this track out a little bit so we can see a little better here. You see the VU meter here, right? And you see negative six is here, negative 12 is here. Here's that peaks indicator right there, right? And every once in a while, it'll shift over. As long as my voice is going between negative 12 and negative six, and I'm fine. If it goes above negative six every once in a while, then that's cool. And if I click on this peaks indicator, then I can continue with the monitoring. And as you can see, I'm between negative six and negative 12 dB, and that's fine. Okay, so how do we get there? What you would do is you would take your interface and turn the gain all the way down so that the peak indicator is not even moving. You don't even see it. And then you would start talking and you would move the gain up and up and up and up and up. And eventually the VU meter will appear way down here. It'll peak way down here. And you continue turning your gain up more and more until it finally hits between negative six and negative 12, and that's all there is to it. If you're going to be doing something very loudly, then you really want to kind of control it by either, well, not backing off the mic, but you're gonna to have to turn the gain down so that the peaks will, again, reach between negative 12 and negative six. Of course, there's always voice control, but that's a different story altogether. Now that we have talked about gain staging, let's talk about recording. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We select the, uh, the track here, and we make sure that it's record armed. And now all we do is we hit the record button. And we do this, or command R, in three, two, one. And now we are recording for our very first time. And isn't it wonderful? Okay, I'm gonna stop now. When I stop for the very first time, I'm greeted with this window. This is a nag window, but it proves something here. First of all, let's take this on stop off. That will make it to where this doesn't ever appear for us again, unless we turn it back on. But the file recorded, this actually was a WAV file recorded just now. Track, the track label, the date, and time that it was recorded, and then the format, whether it's WAV or AIFF or whatever it happens to be. If we had not labeled our track, then it would have been track one dash date and time. At a glance, we would not have known what in the world this would have been, and we would have had to listen to it. And imagine having to listen to hundreds, if not thousands of WAV files or AIFF files to reorganize yourself in the case of a disk fault. This is one of the key reasons why I'm saying, please label your tracks before you record, because it actually is incorporated in that media file. To get rid of this window, we simply X out of it. We will never see it again. That, my friends, is recording. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about saving and rendering projects within Reaper. The link to the Maxcentric playlist is in the description below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and don't forget to put a comment in that comment section below if you have a comment or question. This is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and I'll see y'all in the next video.